Hi everyone, very excited to be here. Um, Nan is unfortunately not able to uh, make it uh, today, um, but she uh, co-built this content uh, with me. Um, we will talk about OCI artifacts and more specifically mchart as well, and how we could deploy uh, them uh, on a GitOps uh, way and manner. So this QR code is lending to this uh, actual presentation, so you could download the PDF. Quick overview of what's GitOps. Quickly, we are on a GitOps con uh, day, so you have plenty of content for defining GitOps, but quickly, quickly we will see uh, in the context of this presenta presentation, we will um, talk about OCI artifact and Mshort and their advantage. Um, we will talk about config sync, one of the GitOps tool out there, and OPA Gatekeeper. We will have two demos, actually. One illustrating how you could end-to-end -end package your Gatekeeper policies and actually deploy them as an OCI artifact with GitOps. Uh, on the second uh, demo, you will uh, actually package an mchart for your application, and you will deploy this mchart on a GitOps manner as well. Some takeaways and resources at the end. So quickly, um, when you have clusters and you want to deploy your configuration, um, so you have your fleets of cluster and you have different personas uh, building their own manifest, Kubernetes manifest. It could be for security policies, in our case, gatekeeper policies soon. Um, it could be shared configs, role binding, cluster role bindings, um, other uh, configuration across uh, and widely uh, in your clusters. Uh, but it could be more specific for specific apps that apps operator could and want to deploy, actually. Um, the usual way, maybe, could be a push mechanism, kubectl apply, um, and other mechanism um, with a CI CD tool, Jenkins, uh, and others. Uh, with GitOps, the goal here is not to have any more this push mechanism, but more a pull mechanism. Uh, so again, you will define the um, GitOps engine and tool, maybe Argo CD, Flux CD. In our case, it will be config sync. Pulling actually is a different manifest from different repositories, right? Um, so that's the principle of reconciliation, continuous reconciliation of uh, GitOps. What's an OCI artifact? Uh, who is using Elm chart in their organization? Yeah, a couple of, uh, yeah, more than half of the room. Um, are you familiar with OCI artifact? Yeah, 10 people-ish, cool. So OCI stands for Open Container Initiative, and that's uh, a Linux Foundation project, actually, and the goal is to define, back in the day with Docker and still with Docker and other partners, is to define what's a specification of an image, a container image, right? Docker container image is one of them. Uh, but there is a more uh, abstract and generic way to define an OCI artifact or image. And the goal is to have a standard a specification to define both the format of the image as well as the runtime uh, to actually uh, run this artifact and image. And uh, Docker container or any container actually could be uh, an implementation of OCI artifact, but you could actually package any file. It could be a readme.md file, it could be a Kubernetes manifest, it could be customized overlays, it could be other files, any, anything actually um, that you are packaging. One of the implementation as well is Elm chart. An Elm chart is an OCI artifact or image. There is multiple of advantages here. It could be generic, uh, again, any files. Um, it's portable, so it's a package that you could port and share across your company. Uh, it's efficient and fast, because we will see that OCI artifact could be stored in an OCI registry. So if you are familiar with Docker pool on a container registry, that's the exact same way to do that. You will be able to do OCI artifact pool so it's very granular on a security perspective, like you have with your container images, um, as well as very efficient and fast, because I want this specific tar and archive and file and package, right? Um, and 
Like with container, if you uh, think about attestation, verification, cosign, sigstore, and other um, tools out there to sign and attest um, your, uh, your container images, you could actually do that uh, with OCI artifact. So that's um, very convenient. Config Sync is one of the tools. Um, who is familiar with Config Sync? I'm curious. Yeah, one person, perfect. Um, who is using Argo CD? Wonderful. Flux CD? Yeah, so more for Argo CD than uh, Flux CD. But here you could take any GitOps tool and engine. Here we are illustrating with Config Sync. It's an open source project from Google, uh, announced uh, last KubeCon in Europe, Barcelona, or Valencia. Uh, Valencia. And um, the goal is I have an engine, I have a component, right? A GitOps controller uh, within one cluster or a fleet of clusters. And I could configure different uh, reconciliation from different repositories, subfolder, branches, etc. right? So that's this mechanism, git sync and git pull uh, from a, a git repository. Config sync, like others, are doing the last mile hydration if you are doing customized overlay, right? You are not, um, it's not mandatory to um, hydrate your final manifest. You could directly point to your customization.yaml file. What we are exposing and illustrating actually today, those two new um, adapter and controller where you could sync directly from an M chart exposed in an M uh, registry. And same for OCI registry, uh, where you could pull uh, any um, OCI artifact. It could be also a customized overlay. We are doing the last mile hydration for you. It's not mandatory, uh, but like many talks mentioned that today, complementary tool uh, could be Gatekeeper, for example, or Kiverno. Who is using Gatekeeper? Yeah, Kiverno? Yeah, quite interesting. So here we will illustrate Gatekeeper. So it's not mandatory, it's not part of the product, it's another uh, project um, based on OPA, a CNCF project. But here you could add more security and policies. So you want to make sure that um, your manifest respect uh, conformance, compliance, and security. And I will illustrate that here. It's an admission controller in Kubernetes, uh, and you could uh, actually have rules um, denying or accepting any um, request to the Kubernetes API server. I want to deploy this deployment service account or whatever object. Please check that uh, it's compliant with the rules and my own policies. So it's typically a constraint template with a Rigo, OPA Rigo, um, with a schema, and then you could implement and extend with constraint. So what we want to do here is doing the demo, uh, two demos. First one is illustrating how to put all of that together, right? Um, so what I want to show you is as security admin, what I want to do is um, designing, implementing my gatekeeper policies, right? Uh, manifest file. I want to actually push them in a registry as an OCI artifact, very generic. And the goal with that is to share that uh, more broadly in my organization. People could pull them locally, but they could also deploy them in Kubernetes cluster um, across uh, my organization, for example. So as a security admin, I will be able to, to do that. So uh, let me show you here. Again, the uh, repo, the demo will, are available. That's public repository that you could download and see. Um, via the slide I shared. Uh, but what I have here is in this repo, it could be in another repo, as a security admin, I will define um, some constraint and constraint template, actually gatekeeper policies. Uh, here I have two, uh, but you could have many more. Um, privileged container. I don't want that people run privileged containers, right? So I'm writing a policy, a constraint for that. And here, um, I could have this template that you could see here, um, where I have my OPA Rigo uh, policy um, algorithm, right? And I'm uh, double checking that we shouldn't have anyone running in privilege, right? I'm looking at the pod level um, or deployment level as well. 
Um, that's how I do that. If you are familiar with Gatekeeper um, as a security admin, what I could do as well, which is very convenient, is doing some test case and unit test on my constraint, right? So here we are leveraging as uh, a test, no, the notion of test from Gatekeeper. Again, as a security admin, I should make sure about the edge cases, what's working, denied or not. So I have a, a disallowed example and a load example. I should have more coverage here, but that's an example. And why I'm showing you that is because actually I could have in my workflow. So here I'm using GitHub Action, right? But pick up any tool you are using out there, Azure DevOps, Jenkins and others. And the goal here is pretty much running some bash script, right? And pretty simple uh, steps. Uh, first steps is getting the source. Here I'm using Gator. I don't know if you're familiar with Gator. It's a CLI, a tool within the Gatekeeper project. Um, so open source project. Um, and you could actually run uh, some comments, CLI command, um, and evaluating uh, your test, for example, in this case. And the goal here is to run Gator verify. So I'm verifying the suite.yml file I designed uh, to do my unit test. And that's part of my CI pipeline, right? And if it's working, unit tests are working, I could go um, actually, oh, sorry about that. Yeah, perfect. Um, so what I want to do is right after, if my tests are uh, successful, what I want to do is in this case, actually log in to GitHub um, uh, container registry, right? Um, so I could log in um, here to this uh, uh, repository, registry actually. So you could have any container registry out there, artifact registry, uh, GFrog Artifactory, Azure Container Registry, same for um, AWS, same for Google, and GitHub uh, act, um, Container Registry in this case, or not just to store your containers uh, images, as well they could uh, uh, store and host the, your OCI images, right? And that's what we will do. So here I'm logging with a tool. I don't know if you're familiar with ORAS. ORAS is a CLI tool uh, based on the, it's a, based on a Linux Foundation project, and it's uh, again to implement the interaction with Artifact based on the Open Container Initiative. And this uh, tool allow me to log in on a specific OCI registry and look at that. What I'm able to do just right after, I'm hydrating my policies. In my case, I'm using Customize. Um, technical detail here. I'm archiving this uh, file, for example, but look at that here. I'm doing ORAS push, like I will do Docker push, right? Uh, here it's for generic OCI artifact. Um, so I'm pushing that in my um, GitHub uh, container registry, right? And if I look at that here, so actually, um, so there is a graph of the two jobs you just saw in GitHub action. Uh, and part of the demo is actually now anyone who has access. So in my case, it's a public registry. It, it should be a private registry. I have a link for that. Uh, but here, anyone could do ORAS pool, like you would do Docker pool. So here you could say, I want to grab the policies of my company, the security policies of Gatekeeper defined by the security admin. So I could do ORAS pool, having the manifest and play with that and actually um, see uh, how I could evaluate them uh, locally on my manifest, for example. And we will illustrate that in, in a few moments. The next step here is for config sync, but pick up any uh, definition for, uh, and translation for uh, Flux or Argo CD. We are using an object to define, actually for this cluster, I want to pull and deploy these policies. So I'm defining this object Pointing here, like you could see, I want to deploy um, a source type, OCI, and pointing to this image, right? I just pushed. Uh, I'm using authentication none, like I mentioned. It's a public registry. It should be uh, a private registry, and there is a mechanism to uh, secure your access um, from your cluster uh, in order for config sync, so GitOps engine in your case, to pull this uh, OCI artifact. And if I look after that, if I do here a kubectl apply, right, I will be able to see here that uh, actually my uh, configuration 
um, my OCI artifact containing my policies are pulled. And if I look here, I could see that I have all the constraint and constraint template uh, defined in my uh, artifact. So now they are deployed. If I look at the constraint, so kubectl get constraint or constraint template on my cluster, they are now deployed and they could enforce my cluster. I have zero violation in this case, but now I'm enforcing compliance and security. So that's the first part of uh, the demonstration. So here, what we just saw is this part, right? As a security admin, I'm pushing an OCI artifact, wrapping up and packaging my OCI, uh, my gatekeeper policies actually, we had um, a cluster, for example, already provisioned with config sync and OPA gatekeeper for admission controller. And what we just illustrated, a pool mechanism, a deployment mechanism via GitOps. So that's the first step, first demo, end to end. Now what I want to do is, let's do that with an M chart, which is again uh, an implementation of OCI artifact. So as an apps operator, I want to define the manifest to deploy my app with M chart. That's something I want to do. Um, so I will have my own repository. I will push my M chart in GitHub container registry, but again, pick up any OCI registry out there. But what we want to illustrate as well is during the CI pipeline, evaluating the policies designed uh, by the security admin. I won't wait to deploy at the end of the day my M chart to see if it's compliant. What I want to do is, again, shifting left the evaluation of gatekeeper policies as soon as I can, right? And not waiting to deploy this M chart in a Kubernetes cluster. Um, so let's see that in action. So here, what I want to show you, it's a peer uh, already open. And uh, typically here, what I'm doing, as an apps operator, I want to deploy my app. And here I'm looking at some um, uh, failing, failure um, issue during my peer review, pull request review. Um, and why? Because actually the apps operator is changing some uh, information in my uh, M chart. And for example, we could see that we are not using anymore an unprivileged container. We are using this one here, uh, which is not a good practice. And look at that. Uh, the apps operator is removing all the security context, right? Um, so they are removing all of that, so it's less secure. And like we saw earlier, the security admin has a, uh, policies for um, uh, not accepting unprivileged, um, privileged, sorry, container, right? So here it's bad, and uh, before actually waiting for uh, this M shot to be deployed uh, on a Kubernetes cluster, here we are using uh, actually uh, Gator to evaluate this policy within my pipeline. Again, I'm not waiting. And here we could see that, for example, um, I'm requiring security context and run as non-root, uh, which is best pr bad practice, and I'm stopping the deployment here. What we are using as well is Trivi. Trivi could scan, so from Aquasec, could scan container images, but they could scan as well um, Kubernetes manifest. So here there is an illustration of scanning actually your Kubernetes manifest, which is more security uh, check here. We are using a kind cluster where we deploy this M chart and trying to see if there is a smoke test uh, to see if we are failing fast here. Um, and we could see that there is logs and error, right? So here, I'm blocking as soon as I can, shifting left uh, some security guardrail uh, here. Um, so I won't go in detail about the, the CI pipeline here, but again, it's a lot of uh, uh, check, uh, gatekeeper, Triviscan, and others that you could look at and actually reuse because it's bash script at the end of the day. But let's say now the tests are working, right? Um, like we saw earlier, ORAS login, ORAS pool, we have the same with Elm, right? So if you're familiar with Elm, three steps uh, once the tests are successful. Elm package, so please package my chart, my, my chart with a specific uh, version tag, actually. Elm login, again, I'm uh, doing a login on, uh, against uh, GitHub container registry. 
and uh, then it's just an Elm push, right? So uh, very, uh, very um, helpful and uh, interesting here. And same scenario here. If I go here, I could see um, the flow of my jobs. Uh, it's maybe too small, but you have access to that um, to see more in detail. What I could do again is and pull of this artifact. It's a public uh, artifact and image uh, and chart, but again, it should be a, a, a private one. I have access to it. And again, I could deploy via this configuration and this deployment, kubectl applied hf on this object. Please deploy this Elm uh, image actually, right? So the repo, the name, the version, release name. Perfect, thank you. Um, and um, yeah, that's how I will define now the deployment of this M chart, right? So I could see um, this uh, detail about what was deployed. In our case, very simple application um, with a namespace, a deployment, a service, and service account. Very basic M chart here. Um, and yeah, I have access to my chart. It's all deployed, right? So that's closing uh, the demo part uh, actually here. And uh, again, first demo was about security admin, uh, designing, coding their own security, having their own CI pipeline, uh, exposing their um, gatekeeper policies as OCI artifact, and then having um, configuring as a GitOps controller, pulling and deploying um, these policies across the cluster, if many clusters. And the second part was about apps operator, having the shifting left enforcement, grabbing the uh, policies um, in the C CI pipeline here before actually exposing the M chart in uh, container uh, in uh, OCI uh, registry, and then uh, pulling to uh, the M chart to actually uh, deploy this M chart. So some takeaways here. Uh, some of the questions we got, uh, and Flux is supporting uh, this new OCI format as well as the uh, Git format, Argo CD as uh, a plugin uh, made by Red Hat, if I'm not uh, mistaken here. So we could see the evolution of yet another option to do uh, GitOps with your manifest. Yes, uh, Git is still a valuable approach, but maybe uh, for some consideration, again, we mentioned at the beginning, fine granular access and security, uh, performance maybe at scale, uh, OCI artifact uh, could be another option for your GitOps, um, GitOps scenario. Um, and there is maybe other uh, consideration uh, for, again, being more performant, portable, et cetera, et cetera. So even if you are using OCI artifact, are we getting rid of Git and do we still have Git as a source of truth? Yes, for sure, because we need all this CI part, right? Um, where uh, all the manifests are uh, in there and the source of truth. What we are doing is uh, having maybe um, another step where uh, the source of truth for the package you want to deploy, right? Uh, is, an, is in uh, an OCI registry instead of a Git repository, but we still need Git and uh, um, what, what we have illustrated as well here is shifting left again more in the, C, um, in the Git and CI uh, pipeline. So that's pretty uh, much it for um, all the content about this presentation, the demo. There is links here, um, the setup and the demo, so you could uh, replicate that uh, on your own cluster. I'm using ConfigSync, it's an open source project. Uh, that you could deploy on any Kubernetes cluster, even kind, um, and uh, Gatekeeper, uh, open source project as well. Um, I have the link of the project of ConfigSync, and the two links at the bottom uh, with the workflow are for the secure uh, manner for pushing your OCI artifact and Elm chart um, on a secure um, GitHub container registry or Google artifact registry as well as pulling them uh, securely from your clusters, right? Uh, links uh, with tutorial associated to that and QR code to download this presentation. Um, thank you. Um, I hope you enjoy this content. And uh, what I would love is maybe taking some question if I have time.
I don't have the mic. Oh, yeah. I got it. Okay, thank you. So my question is regarding the performance. Uh, can you elaborate how OCI is more performant? And yeah, good question. Yeah. yeah. Um, thank you. Um, so what you could see at scale uh, when you have multiple clusters, multiple repositories, any GitOps controller um, by design will do a Git sync. So if I could just summarize very roughly, uh, a Git clone, a Git pull on a specific repository branch um, to be able, for example, to grab a folder, right? So that's how Git protocol is working. Uh, so at some, at some point, let's say you have thousands of repository configuration, all of them will use CPU memory um, in order to be uh, able to grab um, a granular or specific folder of files, right? Um, so at scale, you may be, um, you may see uh, some performance issue on this perspective, right? On your GitOps controller, it works for config sync, Argo CD, and Flex CD out there. Um, now with OCI artifact, you are just doing, please give me this M chart or this OCI artifact, right? So it's more efficient, more performant because more granular. Um, I hope my answer makes sense and maybe you have seen at scale some of you uh, such maybe performance limitation. Does that answer your question? Yeah, cool. Thank you. Hi. Um, this is kind of tangential, but on topic because you've shown Gatekeeper twice today. Um, I was interested in understanding how you enforce updated security policies on existing deployments. Um, is yeah. that like a, do you just invalidate all deployments? Yeah, good question. Sorry about that. Uh, I didn't uh, spend too much time on this Gatekeeper concept. Uh, are you familiar with Gatekeeper at all? Uh, yeah, so uh, the, uh, uh, the beauty of uh, Gatekeeper is you could evaluate at um, time t, right? But actually, it's a continuous um, uh, evaluation, right? So every, I don't know, five seconds, you could configure that. Please evaluate at this time now within my cluster, for example, right? So that's how you will, um, if security policies are changing or deployment or object or deploy, not just with GitOps, but kubectl, you will be able to have this admission controller checking regularly and auditing your policies. Does that answer your question? Does it reject existing running containers? So it will reject, uh, good question. So the question is, is it rejecting current uh, workload already deployed? The answer is no. You're right. It's for uh, admission, right? So the new deployment, but what it will do is actually giving you events and violation information. So even if it's not rejecting your current workload, it will tell you. And with that, you have a reporting tool, trigger notification to, in order to uh, get fixed uh, the issue here. So good question, yeah. Uh, I just wanted to add on to that previous question. So you can actually run Gatekeeper in auditing mode in auditing mode to start with, because if you actually send, if you actually start off with enforce mode, any new application you try to deploy will get blocked and that's gonna cause issues for you. Um, one way for you to look at it or to share it with your entire organization is you can actually build like Grafana dashboards to check out if you, which policy, which workloads are actually violating. So that's a good way to start off. Yeah. Good, uh, good call, thank you. I don't have it here, but in my constraint to illustrate that, you have an enforcement action attribute. It could be um, audit or um, blocking or dry run or et cetera, and you could play with that as well. Yeah, good, uh, good call. Yeah. Another gatekeeper question. So in your gatekeeper demo, you had on the one side a security person saying, let's deploy this version of my OCR artifact. And on this hand, you had a developer in their pipeline saying, check my stuff against this version of an OCI artifact. Yeah. How do you make sure the versions are in sync across multiple clusters and pipelines? Is there yeah, an idea that, about that? So good question. Um, and it could be a longer answer and uh, discussion here, but you're right. In my case, it's a mono repo. I have the policies in the same repo as my app. So it was like checking for this specific version. But actually, you remember the ORAS pool 
command, right? So you could inject this in different pipeline um, with, let's say, latest version of my policy. So Aura's pool, the latest version, or it could be a specific version. So you will need to track that and deal with that at scale. Um, and in your thousand pipeline, how you deal with the version, uh, I could see what you, what you mean with that. So yeah, th there is some consideration to have here, uh, but something to, uh, that could be resolved as well uh, at scale, if I could say. Because the goal also with pipeline, Jenkins and others, it's definition as code for your pipeline, right? So maybe you could automate some stuff at scale for the version, etc., etc. Good question. Any other question? All right. Thank you, Mathieu. Thank you very much, uh, and I hope you enjoy the session.